Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna to be doing a very casual, very slow, just a little sew along. So what we're gonna be doing today is making the ranger bottoms, which I have cut out right here. I'm hoping to make this as slow as possible and show you everything at different angles, just to make sure that uh, there's no confusion. So if you've never sewn before, if you've never made swimwear, if you've never um, even touched a sewing machine, this would be a good tutorial to start with or if you've seen some of my other videos, then I'm gonna be showing you my most updated technique. So as you can see, I already have my pieces cut out. I took the Ranger Bottoms pattern, which of course will be linked in the description, and I cut out two pieces of the front and two pieces of the back, leaving a quarter inch of seam allowance. So as you can see, I'm working with this striped fabric, and on the other side, they're gonna be bandana patterns. So these are gonna be fully reversible, completely seamless, and yeah, they're very comfortable. It's our best-selling bottom, so hope you enjoy. All right, so we're just gonna hop right in. So as I mentioned before, I have my pieces cut out. I have two of the front and two of the back. So as you can see, I have one of the front and one of the back, one of the front and one of the back. So other materials we're gonna need, I have my pins, I just have a good pair of scissors, and I also have this rubber elastic. So I got this elastic from sosassy.com. I'll make sure to link it in the description. It is rubber swimwear elastic. So this is my go-to. Um, I think it's the most durable as far as like chlorine and everything. It's a little bit more difficult to sew with than braided elastic. So if you've never really used elastic or you're not very good at it, then I would recommend starting off with braided swimwear elastic. Now you can do regular braided elastic, however, swimwear elastic is gonna be treated so that it can withstand chlorine and salt water. So definitely start with that. Okay, so the first step is we are going to match our fronts and our backs. So lay these out. I'm going to put the fronts and backs with right sides together. So here, as you can see, I'm gonna pin all along the leg holes as well as this top seam here. So doing this on both sides, I'm just gonna go around and pin everything. And sometimes it's helpful just to put pins uh, down the middle first just to make sure that as you're pinning, things don't slide around. So once I've done that, I'm just gonna go through and pin. Now I used to not use pins at all, and my bottoms turned out all right. However, I have started doing more pins just out of principle, but I've also noticed that my quality has improved and I've gotten a lot more consistent. Now any veteran sewer will tell you to use pins no matter what, but I sometimes cheat. And depending on the kind of machine that you're using, you will either do a zigzag stitch or you'll do an overlock stitch. Now I'm using a serger for this, so I'm gonna be doing an overlock stitch, but for this whole tutorial, anytime I'm using my serger, just use a zigzag stitch on a regular sewing machine. It won't quite be up to the same quality, I'd say, and I think that the overlock stitch stretches a lot better than a zigzag stitch. But if you're just learning, then zigzag is a great way to go. I highly recommend learning and getting the methods down solid on a sewing machine before moving on to an actual serger. Okay, just gonna make sure everything's laying flat. Gonna check the other side, make sure nothing's bubbling. Looks good. So that's pinned and we'll move on to this front piece here. Same thing, I'm gonna start off by just matching it up and making sure that the middle is pinned down. All right, so again, just checking, making sure everything's laying flat. Check the other side, also looks good, got no bubbling. 
But now that we've done our pinning, we can actually move on and start sewing. So we're gonna sew exactly where we just pinned. Now, before I move on, I do want to mention that adding the elastic can be done in this step. You can sew these same seams and the elastic all at once. But I do like to split it into two steps. I think that uh, working with slidey knits like this is hard enough, so let's just make it easier. But I am eventually gonna be moving on to using an elastic foot, which is a machine attachment where it helps you just focus on this part of it and your elastic will feed through right on top. Okay, so moving right along, we're just going to start surging. And I'm using a three thread overlock stitch. If you're just starting out, I would recommend using a four thread overlock stitch, but today I'm using a three. Uh, as far as thread, I'm using woolly nylon on two of my threads and one, I'm using regular thread just because I ran out of woolly line. No. The woolly nylon, excuse me. So let's just hop right in. So as I'm sewing, I'm making sure not to be pulling anything, not pushing anything, just let it sew flat. My needle just broke. Be right back. Okay, I'm back. I somehow managed to blast through two needles while trying to fix this, but I think we'll be okay. So just going where we left off, I'm just surging these seams. And it's looking good. We don't have like any bubbling or any unevenness. They just lay nice and flat. So next we're gonna go in with our elastic and we are literally just gonna go do the exact same thing that we just did, but put this on there. Like I said, if you have an elastic foot, you could have done that um, these two steps in one step, but I don't. So I'm gonna put my elastic on where the bandana side is. And the reason I'm gonna do that is because I like the bandana side a little bit more. And I haven't found the best way to make sure that both sides can lay completely flat. Like usually there's gonna be some turning on one side, depending on where you put the elastic. So if you put the elastic on the side that you favor, so for the bandana side, when you're wearing it on the bandana side, it will fit a lot flatter. So I'm just gonna go in. I'm gonna adjust my stitch length to as long as it can go. Cause the point of this seam now isn't to secure it, it's actually just to attach this elastic. If you're using a zigzag stitch, then you'll do the exact same thing. So as I'm doing this, let's just get it connected first. Okay, so as I'm doing this, I am neither going to stretch this piece, nor am I going to stretch this elastic. So none of this and none of this, but 
Instead, I want it to essentially go on with no pressure on either. However, because of the mechanics of your machine, that probably won't be the reality. So my trick is in my right hand, I have the elastic and I'm just gonna let it flow through my hand. I'm gonna make sure there's lots of slack over here. And I'm just gonna let it flow through my fingers. Now, with the actual piece, I'm very, very gently going to guide it through and make sure that it doesn't get stuck anywhere. And um, yeah, it'll help the process. So just watch as I do this. that elastic went on completely flat. It didn't have any sort of tension anywhere. So that was a good one. I don't always get it perfect every time, but I've done it so many times by this point that I'm usually able to do it pretty well. So I'm just gonna repeat that with all the rest of the sides. And that one's done. So now, as you can see, we have this all sewn elastic is attached. This is what it looks like if, if you're like bunching over here, if it looks kind of wavy with the elastic on, that means that you either put too much pressure on the elastic or on the fabric itself. So I'm gonna go ahead and just trim some of these. Okay. So now what we're gonna do is attach the sides and the gusset all in one step. Now, if you have a bikini brand or you plan on putting in a tag, right now is a good time to seam rip a little hole in the top of the back. And we're gonna use this hole to access the swimsuit to be able to pull it out to the right side for the final step. Now you could have done this before you sewed this whole back seam, but I tend to forget. In fact, I forgot this time, and that's why we're doing it at this time. So because I'm seam ripping, I am gonna go back onto my serger and just make sure that uh, this seam is secure because we do not want it coming unraveled. So let me just get a few more stitches. All right, so you should be able to access the inside. So I'm gonna quickly hop on over to my serger and I'm just gonna go and just serge like that much on each side just to make sure that these loose threads will not come unraveled. So I just went back and secured these seams. Now for these threads on the inside, I'm just gonna trim them those will not come unraveled, but for these ones, I'm gonna tie them in a knot. And then trim them, because I really want to make sure that those do not come unraveled. All right, so obviously this looks a little bit messier versus if we just remember to put the hole in in the first place, but that's me. Okay, so the next step, like I said, we're gonna be attaching the gusset and the sides. So for this front piece, I'm going to flip it to the right side. Oh, this fabric looks so pretty. Okay. 
So that is what they look like so far. Here's one side and there is the other. So pretty. And what we're gonna do is we're going to insert this front piece inside of the back piece. And what we're gonna wanna do when we're on the inside is match up both of the gussets and match up both of the sides for the front and the back. So it's gonna be inside of this. So just watch. I'm gonna make sure that my sides are gonna be right sides together. So this bandana prints on the top, so I'm going to insert it in bandana first. So I'm gonna insert it through this gusset, going to immediately go to this side, have it poke out a little bit, perfect. Going to line it up, grab my pins, and I'm just gonna secure it down like such. So you can see it sandwiched inside of there. Now I'm gonna take the other side, also get it through here, and find this other side. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure that it's not twisted, because when you pull it to the right side, you will be disappointed with what you find. So again, just going to do a pin here. And we have another little sandwich. And then the final one is going to be the gusset. So again, just make sure nothing's twisted. Straighten this out. And pin the gusset. Cool. So the next step is going to be sewing this, this, and this. You will be sewing across four layers of fabric. Okay, hopping back over here, I'm going to sew the sides and the gusset all in one step. one there's two I'm just double checking to make sure I got all four layers of fabric and we'll move on to our final side and there's three Perfect. So now we're completely done except for one thing. Obviously this hole and obviously they're inside out. So what I'm gonna do is reach through this hole and slowly but surely I'm going to bring the entire suit through this one hole. So that's why it's so important to make sure you have a secured seam because this hole will have a lot of stress. So then straighten it out. Looking good, looking good. And so now you have a pair of bikini bottoms. Now for this hole, if you have a brand, now would be the time to sew in the tag. Uh, for myself, I don't have a brand at the moment, so I'm just going to do an invisible stitch to lock this hole up and then these will be completed.